Hello Flight Simmers and welcome to Alpha Hotel Quick Looks, a series of short videos covering a variety of topics in Flight Simulator. In this video, we'll take a quick look at the unique aspects of flying tailwheel aircraft or tail draggers. Tailwheel airplanes, also called conventional gear airplanes, are aircraft that have the steerable third wheel located on the tail of the aircraft rather than the nose. In the early days of aviation, when airfields were literal fields, almost all aircraft were tail draggers. It was easier to operate out of the primitive dirt and grass strips with a tailwheel aircraft. Having the third wheel located on the tail made the airplane less prone to nosing over if it hit a hole in these unimproved surfaces and provided more clearance for propellers and other sensitive areas near the front of the aircraft, preventing them from being damaged by things like loose rocks and other debris. As airports were improved with paved surfaces, aircraft began to favor a nose wheel as it increased visibility on the ground and they became the pre predominant design in modern times. But many tailwheel aircraft are still manufactured and they still have an advantage over nose wheel aircraft when operating off runways that are unpaved. There are five tailwheel airplanes available in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. The Cub Crafter X Cub, the Zlin Savage Cub, the Zlin Shock Ultra, the Extra 330 LT, and the Robin Cap 10. All aircraft except for the Zlin Shock Ultra are available in the standard edition of Flight Simulator, while the Zlin Shock Ultra is only available in the Premium Deluxe Edition. There are also numerous tailwheel aircraft available in the marketplace. The Extra and the Robin Cap 10 are the only aerobatic aircraft in the game, and four of the 10 bush trips currently in Flight Simulator, at least as of World Update 5, are flown with tailwheel airplanes. So if you're interested in flying those bush trips or flying aerobatic aircraft, it's a good idea to get a handle on how to fly a tailwheel airplane. Tail draggers fly just like any other aircraft once they're in the air, but taxi, takeoff, and landing are a little different. Because of this, in the real world, the FAA requires that any pilot wanting to fly a tailwheel aircraft obtain training and receive an endorsement from an instructor prior to operating as pilot in command of a tailwheel aircraft. The first thing you'll notice that's different about a tailwheel aircraft is that your forward visibility is reduced during taxi. This is due to your fuselage being at a higher angle to the ground compared with a nose wheel airplane. As you can see from this cockpit picture of the Cub Crafters X Cub, most tailwheel aircraft sit at a pitch attitude of about 10 degrees nose up when they have all their wheels on the ground. To adjust for this in Flight Simulator, you can translate your cockpit view up or to the side as necessary to see better while you're taxiing. You can also make a little S turns on the taxiway to get a better view out the side. If you're still having difficulty seeing where you're going, you can always switch to the exterior view during taxi in Flight Sim. You'll also notice that the tailwheel gives you a quicker and sharper turn during taxi than a nose wheel. The additional steering authority is nice, but be careful about making very sharp turns with much speed and extremely cautious about using the brakes while you're turning. This can cause the aircraft to spin out, which is called a ground loop, and is one of the most common causes of accidents during ground operations, takeoff, and landing in tailwheel aircraft. You also want to be careful how heavily and how long you apply the brakes to slow or stop the aircraft. Since there's no nose wheel up there to absorb the forward moment created when you apply heavy braking, it can cause the aircraft to nose over and cause damage to the prop in the front of the aircraft. This effect was probably a little overdone in Flight Simulator, although it does seem to have been improved with Sim Day 5. Because of this nose over tendency, the best braking technique is to tap the brakes in short bursts to get yourself slowed down, as well as using full aft elevator to keep the tailwheel pinned to the ground. Takeoff technique is slightly different in a tailwheel airplane. You want to apply takeoff power and get the aircraft rolling, and once you have some elevator authority, apply some forward elevator to bring the nose down. If you're properly trimmed for takeoff, the nose may actually lower somewhat on its own as you get airflow over the elevator. You want the attitude to be low enough that you can see the runway during your takeoff roll, but not so low that you compromise prop clearance with the ground. On most tailwheel airplanes, this will be a slightly nose high attitude, about 5 degrees nose up or so. 
be aware that you may get a slight right turning tendency when you bring the nose down, which is normal, although it is a little overdone in Flight Simulator. Just like with a nose wheel airplane, you want to control yaw or the left and right nose movement with your rudder control, though you'll probably find tailwheel aircraft are a little more sensitive to rudder inputs, so make sure and keep those inputs small. Tailwheel aircraft also have a tendency to weather vane into any crosswind more than nose wheel airplanes do, particularly once the tailwheel is off the ground. This can cause tailwheel aircraft to get quite squirrely during takeoff roll and during landing in a crosswind, so I recommend practicing your first few patterns in a tailwheel aircraft with no wind, or at least no crosswind. Once you reach rotation speed, rotate to the climb pitch attitude and climb out at the appropriate speed. Perform the climb out, clean up, and after takeoff checklist just like you would in any other aircraft. So as far as setup for our demonstrations here, we're going to use for the aircraft, the Cub Crafters X-Cub. This is the most common uh, tail dragger that's used on the bush trips. Of the four currently available bush trips, uh, this aircraft is used in three of them. It's a very nice aircraft. It's got a Garmin EFIS setup, uh, and it's got a nice uh, 180, 180 horsepower engine, uh, and it handles really well. So it's a good airplane to start out for with uh, if you're uh, moving into tail draggers and trying them out. As far as the setup for the weight and balance, you can leave it as is. Uh, half fuel and two passengers plus some bags is just fine for the pattern work. If you want to bump it up to full tanks, it will still will be well within its uh, max gross weight and still perform uh, quite well. As far as the airport, we'll just use our standard. We're going to do Pine Bluff in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, KPBF, runway 18. And then as far as conditions, we're going to set it up at noon. And then the date will be our standard uh, June day mid-June day. We'll use standard temperatures and pressures. And then once we get into the flight, we'll delete this wind layer. So we'll have a calm wind uh, when we go out and fly. And again, that's highly, highly recommended if this is your first time going out and trying out tail draggers, or if you're having you know difficulty mastering the tail dragger and you want to get some good practice in, try to do it with no wind at first. All right, so let's take a look at a normal takeoff in a tailwheel airplane. All right, so as far as the final details on the setup here, I've come in and I have gotten rid of my wind here. So I do have calm wind conditions for doing our first tail dragger flight. And then uh, I do like this cockpit camera setup on uh, this airplane uh, set like it is here. So you've got uh, a good view out the cowling. And once you get the nose down, you get good visibility out there. And you've got a good view of the instrument panel. And the way I do this is I hit the key for uh, cockpit camera upper. Uh, which is going to set it up like this and then I just tilt down a little bit like that and I've got that set as one of my views. Okay, so the uh, before takeoff checklist is complete. Airplane is ready to go and we'll do a normal takeoff uh, in the Cub, Craft Cub Crafters X Cub. All right, so takeoff configuration this in this aircraft is one notch of flaps. The rotation speed is 50 knots, and then VY is 74 knots. So the before takeoff checklist is complete. Parking brakes are released. We'll go ahead and smoothly apply takeoff power. And within a few seconds, we'll have enough elevator authority that we can go ahead and get that nose down. And then just very gentle corrections on the rudder to keep it on the center line. There's 50 knots. We'll go ahead and rotate to our 10 degrees of pitch up. We're accelerating towards our flap speed, so we'll go ahead and retract that notch of flaps. And then we'll just hold pitch at about 10 degrees to get our 74 knots for best rate of climb. Now it's just like uh, any other airplane. Once we get to 1,000 feet, we will do our cleanup, get our lights off, and do our after takeoff checklist. So that is a normal takeoff in a tail dragger aircraft. Again, once it's airborne, a tailwheel aircraft maneuvers in flight just like a nosewheel aircraft. And just like any other airplane, it's a good idea to practice all your normal maneuvers in the airplane if it's a new type to you, to get a feel for how it handles throughout its flight envelope. Landing a tailwheel aircraft is where most of the challenge lies, and there are two different techniques that you can use to land a tailwheel aircraft. Three-point landings and wheel landings. A three-point landing, also called a full stall landing, is a technique in which you try to touch down in a nose-up attitude close to stall speed on all three wheels at the same time. 
The advantage of this technique is that you touch down at a slower speed, but you don't have a lot of visibility as you roll out. With a wheel landing, you want to touch down in a relatively level pitch attitude, touch down on just the main wheels, and then lower the tail wheel slowly to the ground. This technique gives you better visibility during most of your rollout, but a slightly higher speed when you touch down. It's been my experience in Flight Simulator that it's easier to land the aerobatic aircraft using the three-point technique, and the other tailwheel aircraft seem to land fine using either technique. Three-point landings are also better suited for non-paved runways, whereas wheel landings seem to work better on paved runways. With both landing techniques, you want to set them up with a stable approach being established on the glide slope and your approach speed. If you can't find an approach speed for the aircraft you're flying, you can multiply the VSO times 1.3 to get you in the ballpark. This technique works regardless of what units the airspeed indicator is marked in. You also want to pull off the power a little more slowly in the landing flare with a tailwheel aircraft to minimize your sink rate and minimize the risk of a bounce or porpoise. The three-point landing technique will feel more familiar to a transitioning tricycle gear pilot, though the pitch attitude at touchdown should be noticeably higher, around 10 degrees nose up for most tailwheel aircraft versus the 5 degrees or so you typically touch down at in a nose wheel aircraft. You also want to be more judicious with your use of power, easing off on the power a little slower to minimize your sink rate at touchdown. You'll fly the approach pretty much the same way you'd fly an approach in a nose wheel airplane. Make sure you're on glide slope and on your approach speed. As you cross over the threshold, be a little slower in reducing the power to minimize your sink rate. In the flare, gradually bring the nose up to that 10 degree mark so you touch down on all three wheels near the stall speed. The goal is to touch down on all three wheels with a minimum sink rate, though it's actually okay to touch with the tail wheel first. Once you have all three wheels on the ground, start to increase elevator back pressure to keep the tailwheel pinned to the ground and gently apply the brakes in short taps to slow down. All right, so let's take a look at a demo of a three-point landing. We're on about a two and a half mile final, about 800 feet above the runway, straight into runway 18 at Pine Bluff. Uh, 60 knots on an approach speed seems to work out really well on uh, the Cub Crafter X Cub and usually uh, you know full flaps and about mm, between 10 and 12 inches of manifold pressure seems to uh, get us down at the right speed on the glide slope and so everything is going to look pretty normal to a nose wheel pilot uh, until we get over the threshold we still just want to manage our uh, power and our pitch uh, to maintain our approach speed and maintain our descent rate to stay on the glide slope things are going to change a little bit when we get over the runway threshold. We're going to probably pull the power off just a little bit slower and then we're going to try to hold the aircraft off the runway a little longer and get that pitch attitude up quite a bit higher. We're going to try to get up to about uh, 10 degrees of pitch versus the 5 to 7 degrees of pitch that we would with a nose wheel airplane. And once we actually touch the tires, uh, the airspeed is going to be quite a bit slower than it would be in a nose wheel airplane. And as I get over the threshold, I'll go ahead and pull the power off just like I would in a nose wheel airplane, a little slower. And then I want to try to bring that pitch attitude up. I'm going to try to hold it off the runway a little longer and get that pitch attitude a little bit higher without floating. So I'm looking for that 10 degrees and hearing that stall horn is a good thing and ball my wheels are on the ground. So I touch down on all three wheels. I'll use a little bit of rudder to keep it on the center line, very gentle rudder corrections. And then I'll start to tap the brakes to get it to a stop. So that's the way that you want to do a three-point landing in a tailwheel airplane. For the wheel landing technique, you basically want to fly the airplane onto the runway in a relatively level pitch attitude, just slightly nose up at about two to three degrees of pitch. You want to use power to carefully control your sink rate, and you keep a little power in all the way to the ground. As you get close to the runway, keep your pitch attitude level and very slowly reduce your power, again keeping some power in all the way to the ground and making fine adjustments to get a minimum sink rate as you touch down. You'll have a very small flare as you approach the runway to bring the pitch attitude from level to about 2 to 3 degrees nose up. You can add a little power in just before you touch down to cushion the landing and use a little forward elevator as you touch down to prevent any bouncing. 
Once down, reduce the power all the way to idle and slowly allow the tailwheel to come down to the ground. It's important not to use any braking until the tailwheel is on the ground or you risk nosing over. Once the tailwheel is on the ground, use aft elevator to keep it pinned on the ground and tap the brakes to come to a stop. So with the wheel landing, it's going to feel a bit like we're flying the airplane onto the runway. We're basically going to use power to ease the aircraft onto the runway uh, in about this pitch attitude, maybe slightly nose higher than we are right now. And we're just going to use power to just ease it onto the runway onto the main two front two tires with the nose, the tailwheel still in the air. Uh, we can use a little bit of power as we touch down to kind of cushion the landing and make sure we're minimizing the, the descent rate. And uh, we can just use just a little bit of forward stick to prevent any sort of bounce uh, as we touch down. And then we want to neutralize the stick, let the tail gently ease to the ground, and then we'll top our brakes to get slowed down. As we come over the threshold, we're really not going to change our power like we would in a normal landing. We're not going to pull the power off. We're going to keep that power in to keep the sink rate minimized and make small adjustments on that power to minimize our sink rate as we touch down. I use the power deck just a little bit. I'm a little bit high. And then as I come down here just a little bit, just a little bit of a round out and a flare and try to keep it almost a zero rate of descent as I touch down. Once the main wheels are on the ground, bring the power to idle, let the tail come to the ground, and use small corrections on the rudder to keep it on the center line. It's very easy to overcorrect with the rudder in Flight Simulator, so it's better to accept a small deviation off of center line than it is to chase the center line and overcorrect. Once the tailwheel is on the ground, use full aft elevator to keep the tailwheel on the ground and then tap the brakes in short bursts to bring the airplane to a stop. Tailwheel aircraft are notoriously difficult to control in a crosswind, particularly during takeoff and landing. The technique for controlling yaw and drift during landing in a crosswind is no different than in a nosewheel aircraft, but a tailwheel aircraft is more prone to control issues if you touch down with any side load or with your nose not aligned with the runway. It also has a stronger tendency to weather vane into the wind, particularly when the tailwheel is not on the ground. For that reason, again, I recommend practicing your first few landings in a tailwheel aircraft with no wind or at least with no crosswind. So that concludes this quick look on flying tail draggers. Hopefully this gives you the confidence you need to go out and tame all those tail draggers in Flight Sim. If you've enjoyed the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.